Welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. The Eagles start off the season with a W, 38-35 over the Detroit Lions, but are we satisfied how they won? Jalen Hurts, under heavy pressure early, ran 17 times while Devontae Smith had zero catches and A.J. Brown had 10. On the defensive side, seems like the same old defense, just with better players. Devontae Swift made swift cheese out of the run defense. The pass rush was non-existent all day, and the coverage was soft and passive, much like always, so to speak. Listen, he thinks that he knows football, that he could play football, but I know better. I beg to differ. He's one of the most respected and knowledgeable voices in all the sports. Please help me welcome to the show, Balls Charkley. Come on, Charles. <laughs> I I just had to. It, it was. What's just, up, man? How you doing, man? Man, I like. I'm glad to be on your show. Congratulations. Always good to see you, man. That was stressful, Sunday. Yeah, it was stressful, and I tell you what, um, it didn't have to be. Yeah. And, and, and listen, you know what it's like to play in this city and what the fans and what the media are like. Um, I, I just want to get your take on a couple of things when you talk about Jalen Hurts. Talk to me and tell me what you think about Jalen Hurts because everyone's talking about how you know he, he ran the ball too much, so on and so forth. And, and Listen, at the end of the day, he was under tremendous pressure. And I think a lot of the runs that he had to, he had to get out. Yeah, I was happy for Jalen. Like, clearly, he's on a tremendous stretch this year. This is kind of like a one-year make-or-break deal with all the weapons. A.J. was fantastic. But with all the weapons they bought in, all the pressure is going to be on Jalen to make it work. Listen, if you're not happy scoring 30 points, something wrong with you. I mean, I was really happy. Because, you know, he's such a great kid. Right. You want to really pull for him. But if you looked at that game, and I watched the entire game, if you're not happy putting up 38 on the road, in fact, I always tell people that, you know, Seth, you know this, early in the season, you have no idea what the hell going to happen. Right. Especially now. I mean, these guys don't play a single play during the preseason. <laughs> you got no continuance. You don't know. You, got, you can't practice. Uh, like, no matter what you do in practice, going on the road in a hostile environment, there's nothing you can do to prepare right. for that. Right. You know, you look at the Rams last Thursday, you're like, yeah, that team didn't play any games in the preseason. Right. And you saw that. You saw that in, in all the games Sunday. So I was really proud of them putting that game out. Well, listen, you, you, you've you got this camp. Half There are people in Philadelphia that believe that Jalen Hurts can't be the guy. There's people in Philadelphia that's pulling for him to be the guy. And the problem when you play a team like the Detroit Lions, if they would have just blown him out and Jalen Hurts would have thrown for 300 yards, Everybody would have said, oh, but it's the Detroit Lions. Yeah. You know, so it's almost a, a double-edged sword. I thought that he stood in the pocket, made some great throws. I thought that he ran when he needed to. Um, just the other side of the ball didn't match up, you know, to what he did and what they did on the other side of, uh, other side of the football. Well, that, unfortunately, we live in that, this 24-hour news cycle. We got all these clowns on television in the morning. They make you think what you good. <laughs> like, it's, everything's a day. Everything is something new every single day, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. But I would look at it like this. The Eagles made the playoffs last year. Yeah. I mean, it ain't like Jalen's an uh, undrafted free agent who had a, you know, had a couple of uh, bad, good games and bad games. The Eagles got to the playoffs, which that was quite an accomplishment last year because nobody thought the Eagles were going to make the playoffs last right. year. But now, going out and getting A.J., uh, I'm excited to meet him. I never met him. All the other pieces they bought in, they had a great draft. Uh, so, I, I, listen, clearly they got to make the playoffs again. Clearly they are the favorite in the division. Right now, since Dak is out, they're the heavy favorite in the no division. About it. So, uh, listen, that's unfortunate, the 24-hour news cycle we live in. But you know what? That was the NFL team they beat. Anytime you beat the NFL team, that's all that matters is a W. Thank you. Thank you. Because, yeah. you know, I have these types of conversations with people all the time. I'm like, there's only 1,696 players. That's 53 guys on each roster on, on, in the NFL. If you make it to that level, guess what? You are an elite-level yeah. football player. Now, what the organization do with the players that yes. they've got, that's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're on a roster, it's almost like basketball. If you're on a roster, you're on the roster, you can play. I tell everybody, the number 12 player in the NBA is a hell of a player. Now, is he as good as LeBron and KD and Joel and Jane? No, but he been, if he went back to college right now, 
He'd be coming out after one year and being a lottery pick. Right. That's most guys on an on a NBA team. We got 12 players on a team. The number 11, 12 guy could go back to college right now and people saying, should we take him in the lottery or the second round? That's how good the players are. But I never get caught up in the, in the, the noise. I call it noise. Hey, man, they won an NFL game. You got to give them. Listen, I, listen, I got to tell you something. I watched that hard knocks thing. <laughs> I love Dan Campbell. I love me some Dan Campbell. I've never met him, I, I, but watching him, and I saw Aaron Glenn, I saw our boy Deuce Staley. Yeah, right. Like, yo, man, they're trying hard. Yeah. And that's all you can do. Yeah. I mean, because you, your job as a coach is like, how can I make my players better? The Detroit Lions, even though the Eagles won, I think the Lions got to be proud because there was probably three or four times in that game when the Eagles went up three touchdowns, you're like, Oh, they're going to pack it in now. But they kept grinding. That's all hats off to the yeah, kudos to there's, Deuce, there's, Deuce there's, and uh, Dan. There's no doubt about it. But when you you think about the defensive side of the ball, and this is this is what's problematic for me. Um, they went out and spent a lot of money on mm -hmm. the defensive side. They went and they drafted, you know, some really good players on the defensive side. Um, and you've got all of these players that now everyone talks about. Now the defense can be aggressive. When you go back and you look at the era of defense in Philadelphia, you've got, um, you know, Buddy Ryan, mm -hmm. Bud Carson, Jim Johnson. You got Ray Rhodes. You got yeah. this 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 history of aggressive defenses, but yet we play the most passive defense of anybody that you see in the league. And it's just it's not Philadelphia, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, my favorite coach of all time is Buddy Ryan. I love Dick McMill, but Buddy Ryan's my favorite coach because of guys like you. When I was around you. Uh, Byron Evans, Eric Allen, Jerome Brown, all these guys, y'all talk about how much y'all love Buddy Ryan. I say, hey, if somebody love Buddy, if, if a player's love a coach, you know he's loved. Right. And you know, you go back, I took, I saw the story about Mike Singletary and Buddy Ryan. I'm like, man, I said, listen, there's a lot of noise and BS behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But when players say, I love our coach, I know it's true. The thing that was disappointing to me watching that game you said in your opening, you got better players and you're still playing passive. When you're up three touchdowns, you know the team can't run the ball. You know they got to throw it. That's your chance to be aggressive. Not often in a sport event like, well, they got to throw the ball. They're down three touchdowns. We're in the fourth <laughs> quarter. That's the time, like, they got to throw it. Let's just unleash the dogs on them. So I thought they were a little bit passive. And because uh, you just can't let a team – Cause that guy, that game actually came down to the last minute, and when you up three touchdowns in the fourth quarter, the game should be over. Should have been over in the third quarter. Yeah. Chuck, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Coming up, former Vikings wide receiver and Hall of Famer Chris Carter joins me to break down the Monday Night Vikings versus Eagles matchup. Special thanks to our show sponsor, Bridgeview Partners. Bridgeview Partners specialize in IT service management and helping businesses separate from their competition. Go to BridgeviewPartners.com and let them know Seth Joyner sent you. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to BridgeviewPartners.com to learn more and go Eagles! This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Former Eagles linebacker Seth Joyner here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. 
The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear, kitchens, baths, drywall, and roof. Welcome back. Joining me now, Hall of Fame wide receiver, Chris Carter. CC, how you been, my brother? I'm very good, man. Good seeing you. I'm enjoying the show. Great hearing from Chuck, too. Awesome, man. Awesome. Man. So listen, let's jump into it. Let's talk about mm -hmm. Kevin O'Connell. Talk to me about who he is and what he brings to the table and what's going to be different about this, um, this, this Minnesota football team this year. Well, I, I think the Minnesota fans are a lot like a lot of NFL fans over the last couple of years where they have that young, bright head coach they want to be excited about, but they don't really have a long enough track record to really be able to present a case for them. Besides, they've been in a certain system. They've worked with certain players. What I can say is 99% of all the players in the NFL need a system that's conducive to their talent, to their skill level, so that they can maximize their time in the league. Now, and, and, with, the, go ahead. and with the Vikings and the type of athletes that they have at the skill position and a very, very accurate quarterback, so it's a great marriage. And also coming from Mike Zimmer, He's not the most creative. He's not the most loving. He's kind of from the Buddy Ryan school of things. <laughs> so the team and the energy is very, very different than it used to be. So Vikings fans should be excited. Now, listen, he is a he is a, a, a McVay disciple. Um, he mm -hmm. wants to be balanced. If you look at the game last week against the Green Bay Packers, Dalvin Cook ran the ball 20 times for 90 yards. Um, but they got an explosive passing game. You know, similar to, you know, what we saw last week in Philadelphia with A.J. Brown catching 10 balls for 155 yards and Devontae Smith not catching anything. You know, mm -hmm. Justin Jefferson went off with nine catches for 184 yards and two touchdowns last week. So they want to be explosive. And I believe that Justin Jefferson is probably going to open up even more of that offense. Absolutely. I mean, he's been watching tapes all offseason of Cooper Cup and all the different looks, and he's so very excited. And, you know, he's not the diva-type wide receiver, Seth. He's working on his craft. Um, even when I was at practice last week, he told me to check him out, to make sure that he was getting better. And one of those special combinations is this offseason, they hired Keenan McCardle mm. as the wide receiver coach. So, you know, when you have quarterback, you have a system, you have a wide receiver coach that's going to push you to be your best, now, that's the match made in heaven to make players great. Now, we can talk about all the players and all the coaches we want, but you know, as the Minnesota Vikings go, they, they will go according to how Kirk Cousins go. Week one, he was yeah. very efficient. 23 mm -hmm. for 32 for 277 yards, two touchdowns, did not turn the ball over, but didn't face a whole lot of pressure, only sacked one time. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we all know the pressure can be his Achilles heel, that it can be – you know, his kryptonite. But if they keep him clean, it seems like, you know, he's on schedule to have a heck of a year with all the weapons and everything that's around him. You know, I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the season that he was in those conversations with MVP. The one thing you want to watch for is the interior of that offensive line. Typically when he has problems is when he gets pressure right in his face. Where are the Eagles suited to be able to put pressure? You know, Fletcher and the rest of those guys, that rotation that they have, right there in between the guard and tackle. So, yes, I do believe he's going to have a great season, and I do believe his experience. He's played nine games against the Eagles as a starter, and he's 6-3 and three, um, as a starting quarterback against the Eagles. So I do believe this is a great matchup, but the Eagles do have what you call the kryptonite, and that's that pressure from interior. Well, you know, they struggled last week, to be honest with you. They struggled to get pressure. Um, and if they, yep. don't, if they don't ramp it up and you give Kirk Cousins that kind of time with those kind of receivers, you know, it's going to be a tough haul for them. But, um, you know, listen, I, I don't understand what the hate is about, you know, Kirk Cousins. I personally like him as, as a quarterback. I've liked him even during his time, you know, down in Washington. The guy just plays. You know, he's like most other quarterbacks. When pressure gets on him, he's not like Tom Brady. He's not like Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers. Those guys got ice water in their veins. He's like the normal everyday quarterback that if he's under pressure, he becomes very inefficient. No, I think that you're very, very right about that. The problem with the quarterbacks now in the NFL is that we have more great throwers top to bottom in the NFL than any other time. These kids can come into the league and they can throw the football. So when you look at 
who's our top eight to 10 quarterbacks? If you're not in that class, typically everyone's trying to replace you. But we have 15 to 20 quality throwers of the football. And that's why the offensive productivity. Um, and that's why I believe that Kirk Cousins gets some of the, the flack besides the money that he got paid. A lot of times people are hating because he got that guaranteed contract that the Vikings gave him. Right. Well, let's jump over on the defensive side of the ball. What problems do you see the Minnesota Vikings defense being able to present, you know, for a guy like Jalen Hurts? Well, as you mentioned, I went back and watched the, the whole Detroit-Philadelphia game. And early in the game, if they could have got him on the ground, they maybe could have changed the momentum early mm. in the game when Philly was getting what they wanted offensively. So I do believe there will be those opportunities. But, I mean, what they're running as an offense, it's not seen every week in the league. So when, when, when Jalen is getting that read option going, a lot of the time your eyes get undisciplined when you haven't seen that a whole lot and it only been the second game of the season. You could see that in the Detroit game. And I believe that Ed Donatel is going to try to sure up. Also, you have to ensure the edge. They're always trying to get around the edge in some form or fashion. So those two outside defensive ends, having both of them healthy, I believe can change the landscaping. Because to tell the truth about the Vikings, their defense has not had any type of teeth the last couple years. So it's been all the blame on Kirk Cousins. If he gets a top 10 defense, this team can be in the playoffs. CC, I appreciate your time and insight, my man. I look forward to teeing it up with you soon, all right? I appreciate you, bro. Love you, man. You got it. When I come back, fantasy football and handicapping expert Brad Feinberg joins me to help you set your rosters and pick the winners of this week. This segment is sponsored by Davis Honda. I drive a Davis Honda, and you should too. Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandrakia and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name. Mandrakia Law, attorneys you can trust, we get results. This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Jordan and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Welcome back to the Seth Joyner Show. This is the part of the show where we talk about fantasy, give you our picks coming up for the week. And to help me do that is my fantasy expert, Brad Feinberg. Share with us your underrated fantasy players and your underrated defense for week two. And I'm going to start a quarterback, Derek Carr. Look, last week, tough game against the Chargers. I get it, three interceptions. But now, facing an Arizona team that looked awful defensively. I get going against Patrick Mahomes last week was very hard for Arizona, but I think this is going to be just as tough a matchup. I expect the Raiders against a bad Arizona defense, Derek Carr specifically, to light this team up. And running back, look, Cam Akers, Seth, he looks like he's in big trouble. Come off the very serious Achilles injury, they're still pricing him as if he's the lead back of this team. Watching that game against Buffalo, he only had three touches the entire game, and those three touches were not productive. I say, in my opinion, Daryl Henderson's the lead back against a below-average defense in Atlanta. I love Daryl Henderson's value this week in the Daily Fantasy section. I think he's as good, if not better, than any value in the entire card. And look, for defense, look, how could you not like the Cincinnati Bengals, right? When these, def when these prices are made for Daily Fantasy, guys, Seth, what's happening is they 
They don't know Dak Prescott broke his thumb. They're pricing these things Sunday night to get it out Monday, early Sunday, that night, so everyone can play these games immediately. How could you not love Cincinnati going against Cooper Rush? Cincinnati's one of the lowest priced defenses in the card. Going against a Dallas offense, in my opinion, is going to be severely compromised. Love the Cincinnati defense. All right, so we got our underrated players. Let's get our overrated players on both the players and the defensive side for week two as well. I'm going to give you C.D. Lamb. He's one of the most expensive players this week in Daily Fantasy. I don't see it. Again, with Cooper Rush feeding him the ball, Tampa Bay already took him out anyway, right? Now, with no quarterback, he's one of the most expensive guys. I absolutely would be fading. C.D. Lamb would not touch him. And the tight end is a guy I like the talent, Mike Gusecki. Really good player, in my opinion, Seth. But they already said that they're going to lower his touches this year. And we saw in week one, he only had one target the entire week. You know, they used Tyreek Hill and John Waddle. They're the real two big playmakers. Last year, Gusecki was one of the best tight ends in football. His price is still showing that. Uh, I think just the opportunity-wise, it's going to be tough. And defensively, I think the Rams are a little bit overrated, Seth. And I say that because... I think Atlanta with Mariota, uh, I think they're a little more you know, frisky than people want to think. The Rams were like the highest priced defense this week. I kind of think Atlanta is good enough, in my opinion, where they're going to score it, it maybe 20 points or somewhere in that area. I don't think it's going to be a pushover game that maybe most people seem to expect. So I'm going to give you them as my most overrated defense of the week. Now, Brad, for those who like to wager a little something, something on <laughs> Sundays, give yes. me your four games that you like this week. My favorite one is probably going to make some Eagle fans upset here. I like the Vikings getting two and a half points. Um, they are my Super Bowl pick. Uh, I think that they are really live um, in terms of winning this game outright. Obviously, getting two and a half, you better think they're going to win because that's not many points. But I think they're the better team here. Um, I love getting Kevin O'Connell in as the coach. I think it's going to help Kirk Cousins tremendously. Eagles, their defense, I think it may take a few weeks to gel. Love the Eagles long term. I think this is going to be one of their tougher games of the year. I see the Vikings win this one outright. Uh, Raiders, we talked about that when I talked about Derek Carr being underrated. Um, line open three and a half, but I still like it at laying five and a half. I think they're going to have a really lot of success feasting against a very poor Arizona defense. And Kyler Murray missing its weapons. No DeAndre Hopkins, no Ronda Moore. I'm not expecting him at least this week. I think the Raiders win this game by at least a touchdown. And the team we saw last week, Detroit Lions, small favorite against Carson Wentz and company, laying two points. I saw a team in Detroit that can score. Obviously, some questions on the defensive side of the ball. I get that. But I don't think Carson Wentz is throwing four touchdowns again. Uh, I actually thought Washington got outplayed last week against Jacksonville. thought they got a lot of fortunate breaks, like Detroit laying two. And the last one, Pittsburgh. Why are they an underdog? Again, they're getting a point and a half against the Patriots team to me that seems to be in real trouble as well. I thought Pittsburgh deserved to be a slight favorite, not a slight underdog. So I see some value in taking Pittsburgh set. Thanks, Brad. On the other side of the break, my final thoughts and my predictions for Vikings versus Eagles on Monday night. Special thanks to Strategic Sports Marketing. They've taken care of me for 15 years. They'll do the same for you. For over 20 years now, Strategic Sports Marketing has been a leader in the sports industry. With deep relationship among athletes and companies of all sizes, SSM knows what it takes to build effective partnerships. They've been helping me for 15 years now. From speaking engagements and endorsement deals to special guest appearances and much more, no budget is considered too small. And check out SSM's sister company at sportsballshop.com where you'll find everything for your gift-giving needs. Keep an eye out for upcoming coupon codes exclusive to the Seth Jordan Show. Former Eagles linebacker Seth Jordan here to tell you about Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. For kitchens and bathrooms, roofing, windows, and other home improvement needs, call my friend Artie Clear. Get 100% no money down financing with payments as low as $59 per month. The first 59 calls will also receive a $400 discount on their first order. And if you're a senior citizen, double. Look for Artie's ad in the Metro. Call today, Artie Clear kitchens, baths, drywall, and roofing. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. When you need an attorney, you need an experienced trial lawyer who will never settle for less, who's not afraid to try your case, will fight for you and keep you informed. Charles Mandraki and the team at Mandrakia Law have decades of experience. They are ethical but aggressive. Personal injury, DUI or DWI, commercial or civil litigation, criminal defense, experience matters. Visit the website mmattorneys.com and remember the name. Mandrakia Law. Attorneys you can trust, we get results. 
This car is a steal. Hey, Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Welcome back. Now listen, the Philadelphia Eagles got the W last week, and a lot of times that's all that matters. It's hard to get wins in this league, okay? Let's forget about what happened with Jalen Hurts running the ball all over the place. He had to do it. First game of the year, the offensive line, the coaches, they're going to have some improvements that they have to make. Nick Sirianni and his staff has said as much. My biggest concern is over on the defensive side of the ball, and will Jonathan Gannon find a little more aggressiveness in his play calling to allow the players to play more aggressively? That's just a fact. That's just how it's going to have to be. If you're not going to get pressure with your front four or your front five, then guess what? You're going to have to bring an extra blitzer. You might have to bring two extra blitzers. Your cornerbacks and your linebackers are going to have to get closer in coverage in order to make it all work at the end of the day because the offense has to balance the defense. The defense has got to balance the offense. That wasn't the case last week, and they were lucky to get out of Detroit last week with a W. Now, looking forward to the Minnesota Vikings. If the Eagles can get their act together, they got a very good chance of winning this game and going to 2-0. If not, they, if they play the type of game they played last week, they have no shot at beating the Minnesota Vikings. I believe that under the lights, at the link, on Monday Night Football, that the Eagles step up in a big way in every way. The Eagles win 24-20. to Thanks for watching. That's the show for this week. Join me next week as we look back on the Vikings, and look ahead to week three versus Carson and the Commanders. Bridgeview Partners Strategic IT Consulting and Services saving clients money and time by optimizing enterprise systems for over 10 years now. If you're an IT professional, what are you waiting for? Contact the very experienced team at Bridgeview Partners. These guys have an awesome reputation in the Philadelphia market for their thought leadership, specializing in infrastructure optimization and IT service management for healthcare, retail, finance organizations, and many others. Go to bridgeviewpartners.com to learn more and go Eagles. This car is a steal. Hey Seth, let's do a deal and I'll throw in this great gift. <laughs> Is that the way you used to buy a car? Forget about it. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Davis Honda has over 300 pre-owned vehicles right now. Come see why Davis Honda won Best of Burlington six years in a row. I'm Seth Joyner, and I drive a Davis Honda. Seth, Caitlin, you forgot your great gift. <laughs> Birds fans, if you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and reliable performance, Mid Penn Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference and work harder for you. With financial centers strategically located to serve the greater Philadelphia area, we are ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Visit midpenbank.com or call the number on your screen. Mid Penn Bank, the right bank for you. Member FDIC. Go Eagles!